In this video, we will be studying about a very important topic called as functions. We have already studied what are relations and what are the types of relations. Now we move on to the next part of the chapter that is functions. I have the definition of functions written over here. Let's get started and be reading the definition and understanding the same. So the definition of function is as follows. Let A and B be two non-empty sets. I have A and B as two non-empty sets. Each element A belongs to A. That means if capital A is a set, the elements are denoted as small a associated with a unique element. I underline the word unique. This is important for the understanding purpose. That is why I am underlining. Unique element B belongs to B under a rule. Then the relation is called a function. That means there are two important things in this definition. That if I have two non-empty sets A and B, all the elements of the first set A should be associated with unique elements of B. By unique, let's see what do we mean. We also have some examples for the same. Let's get going. Suppose I have a function f from first set to second set. That means from A to B. So it is denoted as f A to B. This is the denotion of how do we see a function as. Now in this I can read it as f is a mapping from A to B. This is read as F is a mapping from A to B. You can also denote this in the other way round that is I write here the first set then I write here the second set and a function is actually a correspondence or a mapping from this set to this set that means from first set to second set so I can be writing it as f on the top of a arrow which shows a mapping from the first set to second set so this is denotion of a set so I write here denotion how do you denote a set now after we have seen how to denote a set I actually need to again go through the definition once and see how we can define a function properly. There were two things that I underlined for the same purpose. That means if for a function I need to define something, a relation can only become a function when two conditions are satisfied. That means I don't have to leave any element unassociated of the first set and each element of the first set should be associated with all the elements of second set. Let's see what do we mean by that. Suppose I have these two sets as A and B. This first set A, this is the second set B. And there are some elements enlisted here. Say this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. This is 1, this is 4, this is 9. And some mapping is given. So mapping can be written like this. Here this is f. And we have a mapping or we have a function enlisted as the square of. So I say the function is the square of and I know 1 has the square 1, 2 has the square 4 and 3 has the square 9. That means the value of a function at 1, f of 1 means the value of the function at 1 is what? It is 1. Now the value of function at 2, the value of function at 2 means with what value is 2 associated? 2 is associated with 4. And the value of function at 3, that means with what value is 3 associated? 3 is associated with 9. So I can
can be saying that a function always has a particular rule. You see here, there was a word called as rule. In this example, the rule was what? In this example, the rule was square of. 1 has the square of 1, 2 has the square of 4, 3 has the square of 9. So this is a function because there is a rule. Because every element, there were three elements of the first set. Every element, each element, three elements associated with one single element, with unique elements of B. Now if this is the case of a function, let's see when a function is not possible. In which example we would say that this is not a function. A function would be when the definition is followed. Not a function would be when the definition is not followed properly. Let's see another example of not being a function. I have again two sets and this diagram is called as the mapping diagram. This is the representation diagram. Right, so I have again two sets and I have some mapping diagram out of it. This is A, this is B. A, B, C, D. There can be any example taken up. This is the simpler example that I am taking up for the definition. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Say I have a rule wherein the things are related in this manner. A is related to 1. D is related to 3. C is related to 4 and B is unrelated. Now, is this an example of a function? No. Why no? Because the definition said that each element of A, that is the first set, should have been related. But B here is unassociated. So this is not a function. So under two conditions, we say that we don't have a function. One, when some or the other element of the first set is left unassociated and the other case would be what? When unique element is not there, where there are duplicate elements or more than one elements. Let's see one more example of the same. When there aren't unique elements and it is not a function. I again have two sets and the mapping made this is A, this is set B. Now I have some elements A, B, C, D. These are the four elements. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4. There can be more elements, not a big deal with it. Now there is some association made such that B is related to 1 and B is also related to 2. A is related to 3, C is related to 4 and D is also related to 4. You see the association, you see the mapping here. Now my question is, is this a function? Follow the definition. Each element of A, each element of A should be associated. Yes, A, B, C, D all are linked to one or the other element of B. But the later part of the definition, the second part of the definition said that unique element of B should be there. So is unique element of B associated? Let's see. F of A is 3. Okay. I have F of A is 3. But F of B is what? F of B is 1 also and 2 also. F of B is equal to 1 and 2 both which is not possible as per the definition. So I mean to say that a function would exist only and only when two conditions are satisfied. The first one is that I should have each element of A associated and the second one would be what? That I should have unique element of B associated. There is one more depth to this concept which we will be studying in the next class that would be domain and range of the function.